uh, using the facility if you count you know the admin, uh, administrative staff and clerical staff and uh, uh, but this, we're, now we're up to 26 sworn uh, officers and six full-time dispatchers in the same building that you know housed half as many 30 years ago back in 91 or 92 um, we did some minor interior renovations to the building um, and we spruced up dispatch they put some new lighting some fabric walls uh, uh, panels for sounds and acoustics uh, sectioned off a small area of the front lobby where you come in to make a little public interview room so if there were more than you know a couple different people in the lobby you could bring somebody in this little room and shut the door and at least um, talk to them and semi privately rather than bring them you know in, inside if it wasn't necessary yet um, and in the roll call room that we showed you um, you know there was no room to expand so we just cut off part of that and partitioned it off and made it uh, made it an office for the lieutenant and eventually we required a small room um, down in the back where we met where the it was initially for storage and I showed you we made that into another office um, so other than that small room we've never increased the size of the facility or the or our square footage we just divided what we had and keep you know kept making it work the best we could now 30 40 years later where the PD is the same size as it was um, when we moved over there um, you know it's, it's approximately 10,200 square feet so as you saw currently we're we're kind of bursting at the seams running out of space um, you saw the locker rooms there's no locker space there's you know one shower for 26 guys there's no um, there's really no storage area there's there's um, the evidence room the property room has no ventilation it's it's uh, you know it was good when we first moved in but it's um, jam-packed now and you know and as crime and in our activity and demands increase you know we acquire more evidence and property and and we can't it's not that we, we don't get rid of it it's that we can't you know until court cases are disposed of so the stuff stays there and we're responsible for it until we get a court order um, you know ordering to return or destruction so we have to house it all we just there's just, just not enough room um, as we showed you the youth holding cells that was another thing you know we have a lot of federal state and OSHA mandates to comply with and um, some of those things aren't compliant so we're grandfathered in for a certain amount of time but you know not forever they anticipate that you know uh, the corrections will be made um, you know as you saw we have carpet that you know some of the carpets just being held together with uh, at the seams rather than replace the carpet there's blue painters tape to match the blue carpet just to make do but you know we do what we have to do and we've been to get by and that's and that's just the way it's been so late in uh, 2008 2009 um, the town and the Board of Police Commissioners agreed to hire an architect to, to perform a space needs assessment to see exactly, you know, where we where we were um, at where we were at at that time, and you know, and predict our needs for the future. Um, and that was, you know, prior to me when uh, Chief Marcucci was here, and, and uh, Ray, you know, Deputy Chief Stewart um, was involved with that. And Ray pretty much, you know, the town contracted with an architect, Jakuski and Holmes Architects, and Ray was um, really involved um, with dealing with them for several months and numerous hours. They, um, you know, did a lot of study of see what we had to examine the facility and investigate our needs and mainly to prioritize what, you know, you know, what there's a lot of things we could do, but what would really be critical and some things, um, you know, that we could cut out. Um, so some of the areas that uh, they prioritize as needing, um, you, you know, most critical to be changed or upgraded were the dispatch area, the training classroom, the locker rooms, which you saw, um, our computer and technology area that was, you know, you saw that uh, room all uh, jam-packed, the evidence processing that I told you about, our prisoner areas and our detention facility, including the youth uh, holding. As I said, some of it is mandated by state and OSHA, and some of the changes are just out of necessity because our increase, you know, increase in manpower in our needs. Um, there are a lot of things that in the space needs assessment they recommended, but to keep the cost down, you know, um, it was decided to cut some things out, like having our own firing range, uh, you know, a few different offices, a canine area. Uh, so some things we could, you know, 
we'd like to have, but we understand we could we could forego them. But there's some you know critical areas that that needed, as I mentioned. Do we have police dogs at this point in time? We we do not. We you know down okay. the road you know it's um, we we'd love to have one, but you know manpower wise and all. We did have them at one time, didn't we? No, we, no, we, we never, never we never had. Okay. You know, so we've been relying on you know other surrounding communities if need be in the state. Right. But you know it's something. Um, Something for the future yes, to think about. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so the recommended um, renovations that that the uh, architect gave was to expand us from nineteen uh, from ten thousand uh, two hundred square feet to about nineteen thousand seven hundred square feet. Um, we showed you the, uh, the blueprints of what he had drawn up, and before I leave, I'll, I'll uh, give you all a copy of that. But he recommended doing it in two phases. In the first phase. Um, was what we kind of described as um, the upper level of the center building where the fitness area is. Mm -hmm. And so the main entrance would be on um, Meeting House Lane, the old entrance to the school with the big stairs there and the double doors. Um, and you'd enter there to a public area. And then to the right, directly ahead of you and to the right would be the police uh, records room and dispatch area and the um, administrative offices. And then to the left um, would still be the human services and and, um, and those areas there. Um, and then that would be the first phase, so it could kind of be done independently without totally disrupting departmental operations. Um, and then after that was completed, um, they do the second phase, and that would be the area that you toured today, that kind of long hallway and that other uh, room in the back, the old Boy Scout room, if that was to uh, be part of that possibly. Um, and that would be a second phase. So they'd be done in two different phases, so not to interrupt um, one another. And that down there would be where the, all the operations of the police department would be in the locker rooms and the detention facilities. Um, and back in, you know, so this was done eight years ago, and the price keeps, you know, increasing. And uh, they came back and reassessed it um, a couple of different times to see how much the cr had gone up. But the most recent... Um, you know, reassessment uh, was back in 2015, and back then it was uh, like about just over five million dollars to do the whole project. But every what year, what was it before? What was uh, it before? Do you remember the time? Anyway, if not, I can look it up right here. Let's if see. you have it handy, if not. Yeah, no, I do. Um, 2015 was that one, and uh, it was 19, almost 2,000 for phase one and. 27 for uh, 2 million 700 uh, for quite a bit. So, two and one an increase. So, it went up about you know a million dollars or plus, right? Hmm. 27 to one night. Pretty much, they're what, what they estimate. They said if you want to just go you know off the 2015 price, they're saying three to four percent at least every year increase mm -hmm. in it and amongst everything else. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, pretty much, you know, where we are with the building. You know, it's it's a major capital project. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been making do as, you know, and we'll continue to make the best of what we have. There's really no other option. But, um, you know, we've been patient, and you've seen a lot of renovations done throughout town, and they've all been necessary. And everybody's, you know, mm -hmm. has patiently waited their, their turn and, um and things, you know, the public works came to fruition, mm -hmm. the fire department, the library over the years has been renovated. The um, and so yeah. we've been patient and we're just hoping that with your support and, uh, you know, s we'll make this reality mm -hmm. sooner than sooner than later because we really are stressed and uh, taxed, as you saw, to the to the hilt there. Anything else, Ray, that you'd like to add? Um, well, only in the mere fact that if you, if you look at the whole building, and I know that, that, that uh, human services and, and the center building are trying to, to do something as well. Um, a lot of this cost estimate is, is associated with doing work to the whole building, all right? A lot of the HVAC principle, you know, replacing windows, replacing air conditioning, heating, and everything like that. It wouldn't just be the police department. It would be the entire upper portion of that building would be affected by that. So it, you know, a lot of other people would benefit from it besides the police department and the town. Far as the build, as far as the building itself goes. So when you walked up the f that main entrance yes. way to the right, yes. you know that would all be renovated, but right. as well the left. So it all, 
everybody, like you said, everybody would benefit, you know, in the facade from the outside, everything would, you know, still continue to match. So, are, you, are you working off of the report that was created, you know, the assessment in 2009 from that yes. to the architects? And yes. has there been revisions to that, or are you still working off of that assessment? No, the, the, the cost estimate is dated 2000, I think it's 2013. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the Space needs assessment was started in 2008, 2009, and I have a report that's dated 2009. Mm -hmm. And then that was completed, and then they came back and they did a floor plan, and we had to get extra money to have the floor plan uh, conducted as well as the cost estimate. And I think that came back in, and I, th I believe it was 2013. Did you get that report? Yes, I sent. Yeah, yes. Since it was originally done though, in 08 and 09, you feel what was done is still sufficient for your needs now, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're we're looking at four percent increase every year. Every year. Yeah. So cost wise. Yeah. Right. Twice. But cost wise. Space wise. Yeah. That still fits be. your needs space wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? I have a question. Yes. This five million dollars for the entire building, would that include any um, any construction to the senior center as well, or the Woodbridge Child Center, or would only be the administrative offices and human services? Just the, just um, the administrative offices, but it, but it would cover, as the deputy said, the. Um, HVAC. Yeah, that all that stuff. You all know, new windows. All new windows. Yeah. You just wouldn't come up. To, you wouldn't come up that main entrance, and all the windows on the right would be would change. All the windows on the left would be changed as well. Uh, and that was explained to us because when we first started the project, it, it actually we were looking at it to be in the area of about 3.2 million. And then when the cost estimate actually came back, and they they sat down and they said, "Look at the total increases. Is, is it has all to do with HVAC? It has to do with providing all those those functions to the whole building, not just what you're renovating for the police department." It just made no sense to <coughs> right stop. Right. You just know, do one stop part. where we were and yeah. forget about yeah. everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So, so if I'm understanding this correctly, so to, to make this work, then you would have to be able to take over where the fitness center is, mm -hmm. right? Be able to utilize that space. Correct. Correct. And has there been any discussion about what would happen with the fitness center, like where that would go, if anywhere at all? No, but I think I, we haven't had any discussion with it. But I think yeah. the yeah. the town has been looking into moving that anyway. Other yeah. committees. So I think that is a work in, work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. As a possibility. The old firehouse was a possibility, but you know, other options. There could be other options out there that we would have to look at. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we really appreciate your patience and for giving us the tour, and also for coming here this evening. I think everybody has a better understanding of what the needs of the police department are at this point in time, and so um, we will continue to work to see what what you know, our report will be uh, and to the uh, Board of Selectmen. Okay, and we okay. thank you for your uh, concern and time that you gave thank us, too. Thank, thank you. And I'll, yeah, leave thank you with you. I'll leave you with these four plans, Perfect. too, so you'll have. Perfect, perfect. We'll make, I'll make copies, I'll have copies sure. made, and maybe a PDF file, and send it to everyone. Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. again. Thank you. Okay, have a good evening. You too. Have a nice okay. holiday. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not all the human services. Someone that's some place to go. Right. Okay. So I'm glad that's so that kind of you. Thank that's you. Right. I was going to ask. Right. <laughs> All right. So the human services uh, report is next. And uh, will you please introduce yourselves? Welcome and thank you also for accommodating us uh, this evening and for giving us the tour. And uh, we're very pleased with uh, what you do with, uh, for our seniors in town. Um, I'm Sharon Bender. I'm the volunteer chairperson for the Human Services Commission. Okay. I'm Mary Ellen Baraka, Director of Human Services. And I'm Jeanette Glixman. I'm the Senior Center Director. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions for us that you, you know, that we can answer so that we know what your um, uh, or what information you're looking for. Basically, we want to know 
where how we can help you with yeah well we were we were thinking how can we help you you know what are your right. needs and right i know you said you're putting in a bathroom downstairs which is yes. critical but yes. is your ultimate goal to stay in that place or be relocated somewhere more convenient for seniors what is well our you know, goal is to do a needs assessment a space needs assessment yeah. and to see if we are going to stay there um you know what the cost would be what would it cost to design it, redesign it, and um, become more ADA compliant. Right. So, so the space needs assessment. Not, nothing has been done. Correct. At all, ever. Right. Basically. That is correct. We have been visiting other senior centers, and we have brought our start. concerns uh, to the board of selectmen and board of finance when we have done our budget presentations for the last five years. Um, we have heard a lot of concerns, especially from the uh, baby boomers. Um, our facility is 40 years old, and as you saw, you know, it, it, it looks quite dated and uh, worn. Um, we've, we have a new director, plus a new social worker and myself, and we have all received concerns from people 60 and over. Um, and also our former staff did for a number of years. As the population changes, people are aging in place. They're looking for educational programming. Um, they're looking for health and wellness programming, program where they can um, be engaged within <coughs> the town, civic engagement. Um, so these are some of the types of programs that we'd like to bring to the residents in Woodbridge to create a community center for our um, adult population. Adult population. Yeah. Um, I think what we brought to the Board of Finance at our capital budget uh, presentation uh, was a, a map of Connecticut, and it was a map of Connecticut with 169 municipalities highlighted in various colors, and the map was 2010, 2015, 2020, and 2025. And the black areas on the map, the black municipalities, reflected a 20% population or greater of 65 or older. And in, in the navy blue, which of course I don't have it with me, but the navy blue was 17 to 19%, um, 65 or older. Um, at, t at 2010, it was a speckled map. At 2015, it was quite significantly uh, darker. At 2020, it was virtually black. And at 2025, it was completely black. So what we're looking at is an aging population of increasing numbers. Um, and the bottom line on the report, which was from the Connecticut uh, Commission on Aging, was, um, is your town prepared? Um, I think we've all seen the stories on NPR and in the New York Times about I isolation as an increasing health risk and that um, we all also know that keeping seniors and older people in their homes is cost effective for towns. Right. We want to keep the seniors here. It's good for everybody okay. to keep them here, but we want to keep them engaged. We want to keep them active, healthy. Uh, we want to have nutritional programs, educational programs, socialization, wellness. We want to be able to offer exercise five days a week to them at a low cost. Uh, you know, I know you all know that the JCC, up until recently, was right down the road and, and helping people. But the clients we see, they need a low cost option. And we're that. We are really there to serve them. And we're hoping to build the programming around the need. About how many clients um, do you see? So um, different programming brings different clients. Special weeks of excessive, um, lots of programming um, brings more. So it's really it dependent it on the programming. Um, we are seeing about, um, oh God, um, we had a number the other day of a general number of a couple of thousand a year um, through all of our, we have a transportation program, right. we, we take people to medical appointments, we have social worker meeting with clients, we they have, have prescriptions. 
right? Yes. We also have the meal program, we have the cards and, and crafts, and then we have programming, special mm -hmm. programming. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things bringing in people, but I have to check that number, but I, I think we see quite a few during the year. And at times, because of the lack of space that we have available, um, we've had to have some of our educational programs over at the library, our book club, so forth. But we feel by visiting other senior centers, we have seen how our space in that cafeteria could be utilized to accommodate two programs going on at the same time. And that's what we would like to see. One of the big issues there, though, is the need for an ADA compliant ramp. Um, and this is something that we are strongly looking at in the event of an emergency. Years ago, you know, we'd have two or three people maybe with canes and walkers. Now, on some days, uh, especially for example, we just had two big holiday parties with a hundred people there. Twenty, twenty-five people in the yeah. room with walkers, wheelchairs, or people and or difficulty. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Uh, our regulars yeah. at our lunch program are 85 to 100 right. years old. Exactly. Um, the people Never who come to, to our that. other programming, we you know we get much younger people yeah. playing cards and Marsha. driving themselves and all of those. Those, those are younger seniors. Yeah. We call them the junior seniors. The juniors, yeah. yeah. And I think that number was completely whacked because I just realized that our between our transportation and our meal program, we have 5,000 a year. So we we. We definitely have quite a few people, you know, using that that service downstairs. Mm -hmm. Would you say the fitness center right now is the a good size, or could it be smaller? Could it, should it be bigger? The recreation department's fitness center. Yeah, that's the yes. recreation. The, that's not our program. That's not oh, okay, yeah, okay. That's okay. The um, I, we department. do have um, we have an exercise class, which is a drop-in class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, aerobic okay. strength training. So stretching. what is the space that you use for that? Is that in that area? We that use area? the gym okay. in the winter months, and when it gets too hot in the gym, we bring them down and actually push everything out of the way in the cafeteria. Not ideal, right. but certainly the air conditioning is a huge boost to older people exercising. And, and we're hoping to, to add a, um, a Tai Chi and other stretching um, classes. Pickleball. Well, we have pickleball starting. Don't even ask. It's called pickleball. It's starting as a league on, on Friday afternoon. And you do have yoga also. Which is we actually don't offer oh, yoga don't right offer. now. I am looking at silver yoga for okay. them. Because I saw um, that is Yeah, the that's yeah. the rec again. That's yeah. The rec. Yeah. yeah. Ellen, you wanted to... Yeah, Jenna, is it 5,000... Individuals? 5,000 different individuals or 5,000? I would have to get you that number um, because um, many of the people who are transported through the transportation program also are transported for our lunch program. So they're the same in the nutrition program as in, in the transportation. But are different than the folks who come to Antiques Roadshow, Diabetes 101, Medicare, the night program. So yeah, we have we have quite a few different. Um, Where do you take them shopping? You know, stop and shop, stop and, shop. Um, and the drugstore, and you know, just around the little Amity shopping Amity. area. But um, medicals, as long as you're a Woodbridge resident, we go. Um, I think seven towns. Mm -hmm. So we'll take you to North Haven or Brantford or um, Milford. Didn't know that. Transportation is a very crucial program for the seniors and the disabled people right. too here yeah. in Woodbridge. If we didn't provide it, they, they wouldn't stay because they have to get out to the doctors, banking, prescriptions, shopping. What uh, vehicles are used for the transportation? We have two buses. One uh, belongs to the State Department of Transportation. We just received a grant last year after five years um, it, the town of Woodbridge will have the title. Mm -hmm. And the second vehicle we had purchased from Greater New Haven Transit. And then we have a police car um, that just, was handed down to us. We just got a new one. They, every couple of years they get rid of one and they upgrade us to a new one. So we just got a new one. And, and the purpose of that it. is so that if they have to go on the Merritt Parkway, they can go with the vehicle. Otherwise, it takes so long to go the back route since mm -hmm. the buses are not allowed on the parkway. Do you use the lights? 
<laughs> Those are taken us. off. They, they, they strip it. How, how many people can the buses hold? Twelve. And a wheelchair. So, and we allow um, either a family member or an aide to ride along as well for the same fee that we charge. So if someone had to go to, let's say, a dinner event or, or something... With Not going to call us. They would call us. They would no. not call no, us. No, they wouldn't call us. They'll call Greater New Haven Transit. The town also participates in membership with them. Okay. And for social events, medical, they do a lot of um, kidney dialysis mm -hmm. transports too. Is they, there a fee for that? Yes. Yes. And, and they. the fee? It's, it just went up from three to three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents. And what's nice about participating with them is um, it's a broader expansion of hours. It's seven days a week. They can do yes. kidney dialysis um, transports. We are not available when the town closes for um, snow days, for holidays. With dialysis, um, we're having we have a little trouble because. It takes a long time for dialysis and people can be there after hours and so we have to keep our drivers until five, six o'clock at night. We don't always, we're not always able to do that. So it's definitely a great backup for people in town. Okay. Any other questions? And clearly, um, I just want to, you know, while you're thinking about it, needs, we're talking about needs, but something you should be aware of is, is, is what the place looks like to people when they come for their first time. We walk into our town library and it is so beautiful, so comfortable, and um, a joy to really spend time and I, I would spend time there hours with my children. A um, little different vibe it's down in the dated. basement of the center <laughs> yeah, building. It's a little dated. Uh, the lighting, yeah. the colors, the quality of, of where you are. And, and remember who the people are in Woodbridge and, and what comfort levels yeah. they're used to. Um, we really need to have a place that's welcoming yeah. and gets people. It, it's not so much that we're saying, um, you know, we're trying to drag them in. It's a health risk for isolation. And anybody in any socioeconomic level faces the same risk for sitting home alone. And I'm glad, I'm glad that you're going out and you're looking at the other towns and oh, what yeah. they're doing and, and what they have, because I think it's very, very important. And I also think it's important if you rank it, you know, in comparison to our town and how we rank mm -hmm. with them, so that, you know, when it's time to make a, a, a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. it, they understand, you know, where you're coming from. You know. Which brings us around to your first question, because most of the places we're visiting are old school houses and their lower levels. They're, you know, they're, we're looking at like facilities. Yes, yes. So we are thinking about staying where we are, unless, you know, I win the lottery. Because yeah. <laughs> I think that makes the most sense. We're here, we have proximity to the center of town, we have the library there that people often use both when they're there. They come over here, they pay their taxes. It's, it's a really important location for seniors. Right. Oh, right, there's not many first floor places available. The old firehouse, I don't know what the square footage is there compared to what your needs are. Well, the kitchen wouldn't really work for us there. Right, it would yeah. need a significant yeah. renovation. Yeah. 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 Right. I know in Monroe, they used to go to the high school. They, the seniors had the, the, a sec section of a couple of classrooms in the high school where they would go. And after many, many years, they finally built them a center. And it's a state-of-the-art center. You know, you get an opportunity just to see what it looks we like. We are going to visit Oh, perfect. Monroe because someone told us they have a cafe there, yes. too. Yes. And yes, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And that was one of them for that reason we right. were going to visit. I mean, it's, it's worth the, a visit. Again, thank you very much for coming and for enlight enlightening us because I think this is important information for us. And can we just ask now, we presented to you the needs. What will transpire Well, next? what we're going to do is basically consider the other needs of the other departments and then at some point revisit everything and then make 
some recommendations to the board, but the board is going to make the ultimate decision. We're just like a, a buffer or, you know, another, another agency, the commission that is going to uh, speak to the, to the board. Okay. Make recommendations. I hope advocate. Yes, <laughs> thank you. That's, that's the word I was looking for, advocate. Yes. We're well, we would appreciate that very much, yeah. and I, I think our uh, older residents also would appreciate that. And several of our programming plans are for filling our senior center as we go forward so that we don't age out and not have people who don't wish to join us. Right. Hence the pickleball leagues and the Institute for Learning and Retirement and the exercise classes and all of the trips and evening programs so that we constantly have people living in town who become interested and want to come in. Unfortunately, that's where we start to get a lot of complaints about how it feels down there, but we're yeah. still spending a good amount of time planning for the future, for t actually for, that, for now, so that people will start to come to us. And we thank you also because I know we know that you're a volunteer. So you know, volunteers oh, are very, very sure. important. People in our town, they, our, our commission yeah. here, all volunteers, and they do an important job. So we thank you you're also. Welcome. So, you. and I know you, you, Jeanette, were a volunteer for many, many years also. So we appreciate all you've done. And, and uh, uh, Ms. LaRocca has also um, been doing this job, so she has expertise for many, many years, and uh, she does an excellent job. She's done an excellent job. So thank you very much. Thank you. We thank appreciate you, it. everyone. Thank you for spending your evening, giving up your evening with us. And where's Adam? Adam? Do you have to? What is Adam? Okay, sure. sure. Do you mind? Not a Okay. Adam? Yeah. Would you like to? Hello. Hello. Hey, Adam. Adam. Okay. How are you? Good. How are you? We're doing well. Good. And uh, we're going to share with you our report. Yep. Uh, for the, you've seen it, for the uh, benches, and you've talked to us about it. What we would like from you is input on, there you go. If you can look at this. Like input on the cost, okay. you know. Are we overpricing? And it's at the end. <laughs> Structures, and it's a, basically it's at the end. We have we've given you a um, link of a possible site, and we talked about what we wanted, what we would like our uh, benches to look like. Yeah. And would, we would like uh, something similar to what we have at the um, playground. I believe they're called the Epi Epi board. Thomas Steel, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The heavy so, ones. What's that? Those were the really heavy ones. Yes. Right. And so, are are we priced? It, you know, it says here donation costs, park bench, three thousand dollars, picnic table, four thousand, bike rack, three thousand, uh, planting of trees, trees, fifteen hundred. Is it, it? Are those good prices or what is well, your? Terry, you, the bench at the playground, the bench is the playground, you're, you're the same ones you're talking about? More or less. Yeah, I mean, they use the Thomas Dale catalog. The difference is that when we purchased our benches, we were doing them in bulk. Right. And the installation was already covered by the overall playground installation, so it wasn't itemized as, as much. Um, but this covers the cost of the bench, plus obviously extra. So, um, and the reason why I think we originally selected this one was because it was low maintenance, didn't need to be, you know, restained every year, it needed to be durable. 
the steel benches that are down there now, the black ones, mm -hmm. um, they're about $1,600. Mm -hmm. That does not include delivery. Mm -hmm. And installing them is just, you know, taking them off the truck and bringing them over there and putting them on, you know, eight pieces of bluestone, which is about $100. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. So maybe we should say, now I, I give an know estimated the, cost? I don't know the cost of the yeah. benches. I looked it up and, of course, you sent for a quote. And, mm -hmm. I don't know the, uh, the cost of those other ones. So maybe we should say these are estimated costs. You know, it could be higher than this. But also keep in mind, Laura, that this is also covering the maintenance period as well. So it's well, not that's just the other event. thing. You know, yeah. would there be a lot of maintenance? That's because it. we, we so said cost a five-year contract for Memorial Bench <coughs> is $1,525 plus tax. Those benches can last a long time. Okay, so maybe the <coughs> maintenance will not be Five years. I think it would cover longer than five years. I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Fifteen hundred is a lot for mm -hmm. five years. Yeah. I mean, you could no. almost buy a new bench for that. Again, yeah. So, sure. So what do you do for the question? What do you do if someone doesn't pay it? You know, do they have if they're putting a bench in? Do they have to pay the maintenance on it? Or well, I think we we stated that it, you know after the maintenance period expires, that then the town can decide if to the, remove it. Right. If it's like not in good shape, yeah, then right. the town has yeah. the ability to remove the structure. But I think with um, also with our park benches, the picnic tables, that doesn't apply because we had a very expensive one, but the um, park bench that we got from Thomas Steele included the plaques, mm -hmm. which was part of our fundraising effort. Okay. So yeah. this one, I think it depends also. I mean, we went through a different company, but it's the, it's the bench, the plaque, the installation. I think, it wasn't it? more I, I expensive leave. to put it on like the cement because I think originally we had um, we wanted them on a cement pad right, right. and that was like much more than putting it on like a blue stone because um, it was kind probably a hundred dollars more not much more you know it's just bags of cement we just form it out put it in there that, and dye it so it's not that much but three thousand I think it's a good number for the park bench okay yeah I'd leave that and the picnic table it's, it's about right I think we should we, we should change it to <coughs> estimated you know, three, three thousand. So right. this way, there's wiggle room. I mean, that be that that bench is going to last. Yeah. Twenty five years. Right. Yeah. My, and if you, even if the paint chipped off it, you could bring right. it back and go. Yeah. You know, sandblast it or right. whatever and paint right. it again. And right. And that's what we're looking for. Yeah. You know, we're looking for longevity. something that longevity yeah. and uh, um, that would last a long time and and in a maintenance to avoid you know, a costly maintenance fee. Right. Now you can get them at different colors if you want to, too. I mean, you want them to blend in or yeah. you want to, just, you know, well, I blue, think, I think we had to green. blend in, you know. Green, probably, to the other one is there. So whoever wanted a bench, they would contact me and I would right. explain everything? Okay. Park department. All right. right. Now, do um, they write a check to the town? Is that what, how it would work? Or? I would think so. I would... Um, well, how have they done in the past? Have they paid for the bench? Do they paid for the bench. So it's so better to have them pay directly for the bench right. and then a separate fee to the town, which covers the installation. Yeah. And okay. Payments. Okay. All right. So then maybe we should clarify that. Yeah. That they pay for the bench. You'd have to, Jerry Shaw, went through Jerry Shaw State, even the, the Bluestone, it was like eighty two hundred dollars And they paid Jerry, you know, mm -hmm. the town, and okay. they do it that way, plus the bench. Okay. And then ship it right to the town, the public works okay. garage. And then you would be notified that the bench has arrived and right, that right. it needed to be installed. And what I did in the past, the plaque, I, I, that was their responsibility. Okay. Um, okay. They should call with what they want written on it and, and whatnot. Okay. Um, that's, yes, well, that's we, my have, we have it basically listed of what, you know, to make it uniform. Right, it should right, be right. On it, sure. So. Okay, any other questions about the benches or structures or anything else? Are we going to keep it at five years or are we going to make it longer? Um, Since it's a make it longer? What you, yeah, yeah, 10 years? I would put 10 years. 10 years, years. Yeah. okay. All right. Keep it at 1500 or reduce it to less costly? Yeah, I think that's a lot. I think 1000 500 Well. Why don't we look up the price of the bench yeah. first before okay. we start throwing numbers around? Okay. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are we I looking think what for the we should do also is put a picture when we do the report to the uh, Board of Selectmen. But what is, what is the You're 1525? You're referring to the, the contract, the five-year contract? Yes. 
the five-year contract. At the bottom of yes, the page. Right, yeah. right, right, right. That's what I'm referring to. Yes. Oh, so that it's a bit confusing. So I yeah. thought that the maintenance that the three isn't the three thousand dollars. No, that's include just the, the maintenance. Cost. Oh, because because here it says installation yes. and maintenance for five years. For five years, then beyond five years, it would be. Oh, so then that other cost kicks in. Right. For, for ten years, then you add the fifteen hundred to bring it. It would be ten, 10 years. years, right? Yeah. Is that reasonable but in it your opinion? Like those Helen? benches, like you said, they yeah. might just need sandblasting and painting once every 15 ten years. Or once if that, that yeah, if five so years, yes, every five, every five, five years, years you a lot, a lot. Yeah. 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 I think it's probably going to be less than that. What are these benches I think it sounds high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, five hundred steel. Bucks. I mean, it, oh, yeah, like I said, yeah. all yeah, they need is the, maybe a paint. They, the playground. Remember the ones at the playground on Bees Road? Yeah, you want to make it reasonable yeah. where someone but different from is the happy to buy it. They right. are, yeah. They yeah. could always different. change it. But they're right. steel. They're wood. Yeah. They're steel with yeah. a wooden right. person. Right. After 10 years, so they can always yeah. change yeah. it. Yeah. Take yeah. more work. It's fine. 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 It's um, so it's more in black and white for them. Okay, and um, we also have, I believe I gave it to you, wood uh, gathering. Okay. Um, how does that look to you? you what page is that on? Uh, that is on third, I don't know, the bench marker. Okay, so it's towards the back. Permit required having a location for Town of Woodbridge yeah. wood removal permit. Yes. You got it? I know the last time we spoke about ex expanding it to, instead of uh, the three months, I think they we had said here, uh, November 1st to April 1st. And uh, we limited it to, to these months uh, because of the mud and safety issues. And I know people have mentioned expanding it. So um, Expanding the date? The dates. You shouldn't because, um, my opinion, because yes. birds are starting to nest. Right. Animals are starting to create their you know, little exactly. homes and they're out there with a chainsaw. And that's why we Just, wanted you yeah. to comment on that. Okay. And uh, we, we, we changed it to the town of Woodbridge wood removal instead of wood cutting because this way we avoid people. No one's cutting a tree down. But as far as the dates go, though, you know, what if we're out of those dates and all of a sudden a whole bunch of trees fell? You want to be able to allow someone to remove it. I think that they should just sit there and wait till the proper time. Yeah. yeah. My personal opinion. Yeah. Because it, like turkeys or even yeah. a skunk, I mean, yeah. they're raising their young and yeah. you're in there pulling trees out and yeah. okay, chainsaws, so just let them be and, you know, the tree will be there. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Unless it's a safety hazard and it's over, you know. Well, oh, if it's a safety path, hazard, the different. town's going to remove it. Right. So. Yeah. So it, it shouldn't be. You know. I should stick with those dates. Yeah. Okay, it's important. Okay. All right. Anything else? I know. Any other questions for Adam? Adam, thank you so much. That's it. I really appreciate your okay. expertise, you're and you always do a great job, and you're so accommodating. So we appreciate you coming out again. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. you too. Bye. Bye. Ellen, welcome. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry about thank you for coming. Last time, of course. Um, so I think what I'm here to talk about is your review of the town center plan. And some of us have talked about this before. One thing I've learned being first selectman, and I think you're all seeing this too, is how long it takes. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I'm talking to Terry. Preaching um, to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> how long it takes for things, plans, and ideas to come to fruition in the town. And I think what's happened with the town center plan is that people put many, many hours of thought and energy into this plan, and I think it was largely Coupop driven. It's been a, this has been a very important commission over the years, and there were very, a very thoughtful plan. They looked at different ideas, but it's been sitting on the shelf for so long that not only you as new members right. of Kupop, and I, you're not even the next generation, you know, I think you're many generations later, um, but people in town as well have all kinds of ideas about the town center, and I think it's, it's worth looking again, and I really appreciate your doing that, either to say, yes, what they did before is 
the right thing, or maybe we can tweak it a little, or maybe we need something totally different. But I don't think people will be satisfied with what we have unless it gets a fresh look. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what you're doing. Now, right. you do have the, all the prior reports, right? Everybody has gotten those. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's quite a few reports. And um, I see what you're doing is asking the, the groups that were part of that and whose needs were considered at the time to speak again about where they are. Um, so I think it's a really good thing to be looking at it again and see what we can do. There are a couple of things. I, one thing I want to update you about is that I appointed an ad hoc group. It's just three people who are looking at the old firehouse to use the money we now have for it. Because we have um, $500,000 of a state steep grant and $200,000 of remaining insurance money. Right. The steep grant has a time limitation yes. on it when it has yeah. to be used. So um, I've asked them to at, at least uh, recommend to us the use for the 500, if not the whole 700,000, if there are things that can be done that the building needs regardless of what use is ultimately decided upon. And they met for the first time yesterday and they're looking at things like a handicapped accessible elevator. It's hard to imagine any use of the building where we won't want an elevator. They're looking at HVAC and insulation and from they met, as I said, for the first time yesterday. I had a, a short conversation today with one member of the group and they are pretty confident that there's plenty to be done with the funds that they have without committing us to a definite path. I asked if, there, if it was inefficient and that it would really make a big difference if we knew at this point, and I don't think that's the case. Um, so given the time limitation, I think it's really important that we go ahead and, and um, at least use what we have. In terms of other funding, um, you know, we don't have a lot of room in our budget. As I said, I, it's sort of amazing to me, and I'm sure it is to you, how, how long it takes and how hard it is for items to get into the budget, particularly these big um, infrastructure mm -hmm. costs and, and capital expenditures. And one of the problems is that we have spent so much money on the country club. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a $7 million purchase that we had not anticipated. You know, our finance director is great and plans out. We look at six-year plans all the time, but this was something that the town deemed important, and we've spent quite a bit more on the country club. And at this time, the Board of Selectmen has decided they don't want to go ahead with development, so there's nothing, there's no money coming in, in in that regard, and there are costs associated with that as well. We also, we have a self-imposed borrowing cap which is 10% of, I believe it's 10% of our budget, and we're very close to the 10%. Tony likes to leave a little room under that for unexpected mm -hmm. items that come up for emergencies. So I don't know what the timing is on the capital needs. And as you look at them again, you know, I'd hate for us to have a new plan in 2017 that nobody looks at again until 2027. Yes. Um, but maybe by looking at what the needs are and pushing on that, it will change the discussion a little bit about ways we can bring in money and maybe have people <laughs> look at the country club differently because I don't see what else is a likely infusion of funds other than tax revenues. Mm -hmm. um, but as you all know, it's very controversial and the Board of Selectmen wasn't there on development. Uh, so I. I think those are the, the main points, but I, I do think relooking is very helpful to the town. Uh, a couple of questions then. So um, would it be possible to work with this ad hoc committee and or meet with them and see what they're... Yeah, maybe come sure. here. Think, think, yeah, yeah. Well. yeah actually, who, I was who's, suggesting... Who's on this committee? Um, Bob Tucker is the chair, Mike Stein, and George, whose last name I don't remember. Okay. And they're architects, and just to, to look at that. And mm -hmm. really what, what they're going to do is take a look at it and then help us develop an RFP mm -hmm. for doing the work. And I had suggested to Bob, again, this is all just happening. Um, I'm sure they'd be happy to sure. bring you up to speed on And doing. what's the deadline on this, on the grant? Do we know? I think it's 2018. I'd have to look at that. Yeah, it's really coming. That's correct. Yeah, so, and we talked to me. That's, that's a tight deadline, too. I'm not sure it had to be completed. Tony 
Genovese works with the state on these more, and they're mm -hmm. usually pretty good about an extension, particularly if we're on our way and right. we know what we're going to be doing with it. Okay. What would be, I guess, most helpful to them or to this whole project is if we really come up with some sort of plan or some sort of vision that can then be worked on and move, try that to move we forward. Advocate. Well, that would be great. If you, if you come up with a plan, you see, I, as I understand it, all of these plans you're looking at and all the discussions, nothing was ever formally approved. Yeah. Right. Um, if you did, if a plan came to the Board of Southern that was formally approved, I think that would certainly make a difference. I don't know that it would make it happen right away, and right. I don't know, you know, it could, <laughs> it could always be changed, yeah. mm -hmm. but I think it would be a help mm -hmm. to take that next step. Mm -hmm. Because people who don't like it say, well, it was just a plan. It was just a plan. Um, yeah. So I, I really do appreciate your looking at everything again. And, you know, the Senior Center presentation, they've been looking at very creative ideas mm -hmm. for the Senior Center yes. and ways to um, have handicapped accessible access, right. not through the old entranceway, but through a whole new entranceway based on an idea they saw somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we can all see the need. Yes. You know? yeah. We do, but at the same time, we're always mindful of the mill rate. Yes, you know we don't have a big commercial base, right. and people really do care about the mill rate and their taxes. Absolutely. So it's a it's a fine line, especially with um, an older community. As the yes. community is getting older, uh, they're reaching retirement age, and uh, increasing the mill rate is going to impact who stays and who goes. And um, you know that's something to consider. That's something to keep be cognizant of. Yeah. What what is the budget for any capital improvements for say two thousand and seventeen? You know, we're just getting the proposals now. Okay. So I, I can't really say what what will be approved. And you know what the process is the all the boards and commissions make presentation jo to the, a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. Of course, you're welcome to as many meetings as you'd like to come to. Uh, we've heard the capital budget presentations, and we'll be getting the operating budget presentations. And, you know, I really don't know. There are some members of the Board of Finance who are feeling this is the year to really curtail spending. I mean, one person in particular has been saying he'd like to say a no, see a no-increase budget. Well, that's very difficult. Yes, we just difficult. signed new contracts this year for town employees. Mm -hmm. Beecher Road yeah. is... Um, Salaries. Well, there, there are... The, I don't know that Beecher... Beecher didn't have a... Um, a new contract, but salaries always go up in there, having some uh, unexpected special education costs, you know, Benefits. that goes up and down, yeah. and you have to deal with those. But so far we haven't had anything very troubling. Last year we had a real problem because our, am our share of the Amity budget right. went up almost a million dollars, yeah. and, and there were one or two other things that were um, big drains on the budget before we got started. We don't have that mm -hmm. at this time. so. And what's the current plan for the country club? Just sit and do nothing? Uh, <laughs> sort of. We have no, there were no offers on the table. Okay. I, I don't know if you all know, Yale rejected the Redan plan. Yeah. So that's a total non starter. The only proposals we've had, well, we had one proposal was rumored we were going to get a proposal for four and a half million dollars for the golf course. It came in at 700000 without a conservation easement. So they wanted to be able to flip it, and they withdrew it because it was too high. So no one is interested in buying the golf course um, for any amount. Somebody else offered us $500,000 for oh everything. Okay. So it's just, that's not happening. Uh, that's a good deal. So, yeah, really. And, and, you know, we get together right, and, you know, you know buy and, Well, that's what a few people in town said, I'll buy it. <laughs> So right now, um, the, the Toll Brothers, they withdrew, or we just voted which ones? to the Toll Brother, the so, development? Well, Toll Brothers did not exactly withdraw. They, um, well, first of all, they had said they would only go forward if the, the Board of Selectmen supported sending the proposal to the town for a vote, but, but they would not go ahead if it was a three to three vote or I broke the tie. And the three Republican members said they would not vote for it. So it was off the table in that way. Then when the Redan Yale proposal came up, Yale wrote to us and said, anyway, we see the town is more favorable to this other proposal. We'll step back for now. They didn't exactly say they're withdrawing. 
So they may still be there, but. Um, so what would it take? To, what would it take to bring the Toll Brothers plan proposal to a vote to the town? What what would make that happen? Well, I guess there are a couple of things. Toll would have to indicate that it's still interested. We don't know that if they still have it. Uh, the board of selectmen has to vote for it to go to the town. So if the if it's still a three to three vote, we'd have to be sure it's three to three, and that I would break the tie. But Toll would have to be willing for it to go to the town. You know, they're feeling like it's so controversial it's so to begin controversial. with that it needs a more robust yeah. right. endorsement. Now I'll tell whoa, you whoa, whoa, what whoa. the selectmen are saying. Yeah. Okay. One person says she will not support development no matter what, and she would never yeah. support Toll anyway. So, the, the, right. and Toll accepts that. Yeah. Um, the other two, as I understand it, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but they said they think there's a lot of merit to the proposal, but they're very concerned about the zoning change. That if you allow condominiums and a change in zoning at the club, there's no way you can prevent it from other places. We have had two separate zoning decisions that meet my standard of comfort, understanding there's no such thing as a guarantee, but these these developments happen all over the state and actually most towns are eager to have them because <coughs> they're so beneficial financially. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's not just the money you take in to begin with, but they're a big tax positive. Yeah, it's a long, long term net positive. It's a, it's a long term net positive. And also the presentation that um, Jeanette just gave, I was just astounded at the numbers of how many yeah. of aging seniors exactly. remain to stay in town. And, and in the state of Connecticut, and it's like, what are we doing for them, and like, what kind of housing are we providing? And the Toll Brother one was the one that was 55 and oh, over. 55 and over. See, so I, I like, that I, I would don't almost know. serve like two needs because you would right. cater to our population as the baby boomers are are looking for the demand, but also get give the town a source of revenue to help the fire, the police, the police department, the senior center, and the human services like. See, I, 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 just, I mean, my take on this, though, right now is that I think Toll Brothers and maybe a segment here, is seeing this as being very controversial at a very limited percentage of this town. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think, you know, bringing something like this to a town-wide vote, mm -hmm. you might see the numbers might be very, but very different. But didn't it go to right. a vote? Uh, well, an earlier I, I would proposal. Agree with you. Right? Yeah. Because, yeah. as I said, you know, it's like, I, I just think it's, just, you know, the loudest people are the ones who are getting heard, but there might be a very small number. And so of, of what's going on in this town. And I think that, you know, we're not really understanding or knowing what this town wants without it coming to a vote to the town. Mm -hmm. And by relying on six people or seven people to make that decision, to me, it just doesn't sound right. So, so a couple of things. Yes. Um, there, there was an earlier, more modest toll proposal in 2011 that was turned down two to one. And it was 1,500 voters. Um, I, I don't know the answer to your question. I really don't know. But again, at this point, um, Toll has to believe that too, to say, first of all, they have to still want, you know, sure. I don't know that the pros are the like, assuming it is, um, if they would be willing to go with a, a split vote, you know, or something less, because otherwise we have no proposal to bring to the town. The other thing is, um, we can try to understand better if there's any zoning opinion that would satisfy the other members on the Board of Selectmen. I mean, we've tried, but mm -hmm. um, we can ask them again. So it's easy to say, um, let's do nothing. It's not that but easy. It, but, but, <laughs> if, but if, if but it's very if, costly. If, if we do, do yes. nothing and we continue to, to do nothing, what is the cost? Yes. What happens? So, so some of the um, short-term costs no matter what we do. The short-term costs include the environmental cleanup, which is, I'll round it to about a million dollars, and also the what we do with the in existing infrastructure, particularly the clubhouse. And the clubhouse, um, in my view, really has no more useful life. We just learn every day about something else failing in the clubhouse. Demolition of the clubhouse, so the recreation department going there would be out of the question? You know, 
I mean, this is all I, very I mean, controversial. I mean, yes. I will tell you, in my opinion, it's out of the question. If you if you look at the condition of the building, what it would take, we've had several studies of that as well. We've had people tell us it's more efficient to tear it down and build a new building than to try to try and fix, it, fix exactly. that yeah. building. So, um, you know, I didn't come prepared with the numbers, but Tony and I had rounded it. It's somewhat under $2 million to do the environmental cleanup and take down the building. We still have to decide what we're doing with the pool. The numbers are just mm -hmm. coming in on the pool. So, Plus the carrying costs for the note that we have. Uh, well, well, of course. We're yeah. Yes, which is about That's I one think of the about costs of dollars. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's, that's an ongoing cost. Yeah. Um, so the last toll proposal was $5 million, which is what our remaining note is. So if it was used in Tucker, we could pay it off. It was for f about 42 or 45 acres. We'd still have about 100 acres. Not all totally usable, but plenty of acres. And, um, and that was I just to purchase a section and develop the housing, but that doesn't include like the taxes that you would get each That's year right. or two? Right, and the taxes when it was fully built would be I think in the six to $700,000 range net, perhaps a little more. Yeah, I don't know if I would go by what happened in 2011. I think it was a different, we're in a different place, different time, different way of thinking, 2011. I think the purchase was still fresh, maybe a lot of people still thought that there was some sort of viability you know, for the spot. And, you know, now I think at five, six years later, I think a lot of people have come to realize that that is just not going to happen. You know, it's just, a, it's mm -hmm. a, basically a dead zone when it comes to either making it useful for golf or as a, rec a center for people to like go to a pool and stuff like that. So, I don't know, in my, in my sense of things, to me, it seems like this is the kind of thing that would, it's time for the town as a whole to make this decision. But I think well, also the, real the reality is in this town, in any town, in any state, there is no such thing as a development that's going to be, you have 100% of the people right. on board with that plan. Right. It, doesn't, it, doesn't right. it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. No. Right. Well, you know, so you it just is. You have to do something that makes sense. And also, what's, what's practical, the Practical, financial. You know, if, you get, if you can get Toll Brothers to, you know, you know reintroduce this plan. What's, I mean, what's, what's, what's the hurt here? What's the worst thing that can happen you know, if it comes to a town wide vote? So the town vote, votes it down, and then, then we know it's done with, and then we, then we can move on. You know? if, Toll, if Toll is willing to do that with, you know, as I said, they made a condition of the support they wanted from the Board of Selectmen and they didn't to get keep that. it a viable, yeah. and they didn't get that. Now, you know, you can make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, you can come, you know, the, the vocal, as you said, the, just about the only people we've heard from, certainly the only people we've heard from publicly are against yeah. the development. And, and what, how about the impact of the uh, Toll Brothers on properties already in town? Uh, how's the real estate market moving? in Woodbridge? Well, I, certainly not my area yeah, of expertise, okay. but so I'm not aware of developments like this having any negative impact. Okay. I, you know, I'm just worried that, about resale value for people that are already living in town, and it's going to come a time where, you know, we probably will be ready to sell our properties, and right. how will that impact? So Could we it, look at the recent development that's like still expanding on 34? Because isn't that like all adult housing? Yes, it is. Yes. And there was Selling like more well. demand. They are. And they're Field, expanded. Fieldstone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But and I, I did don't it remember hurt the exact prices, orange? but the Toll Brothers' proposals, they were somewhat pricey homes. Yes. Right. Much so less than like, Fieldstone. Right. Much but less. It's, so it's but not like they're coming in with inexpensive homes and everybody's going to go, oh, I'm buying the less expensive right. you know, home and not buying well, it somewhere else. We did Woodbridge. ask so that. They were relatively expensive. Well, from we asked that some be in the at the median price in Woodbridge, which is three fifty. So they'd probably be so three fifty to five fifty. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, so. but not all. Of, so not all of the people. I think that Toll had estimated about a third of the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this would be built over. Different. You know, don't hold me to these numbers because I haven't looked at it for a while. But maybe yeah. five to seven years. I think they thought maybe a third would come from Woodbridge. What the realtors are saying about the depressed housing values in Woodbridge is that seniors are staying in their houses too long and that if they had a place to go to downsize they would turn over faster and 
we'd have more young families coming in. So I, I don't, I never heard anything credible to suggest that this would in any way harm mm -hmm. values in town. I, I just, and again, you know, if you look at the communities that have these developments, they're, they seem to all be very happy to have yeah. them. So. In regards to the country club, I know we put it out for request for a proposal for, for toll for other type developments. Have we ever just put out a request for a proposal for any idea? Yes, yeah. that's what the proposal that since I've been here, the, yeah. the request for proposal we put out was could, because we had consultants who thought that the original toll proposal was the ideal use of the property at that time. Yeah. So our RFP was for something like that or anything else consistent with the environmental you know, concerns of the town and the, the look of the town and the feel of the town, anything at all. Yeah. And we got two proposals. One was toll, a very different one from what we ended up with. We negotiated that one. Right. And the other was a proposal that the, um, it was for senior housing, it was a very different model. It was rentals for assisted living. They wanted to purchase just the area right around the clubhouse and the country club. And um, they, uh, their proposal would have cost us a million dollars in the short term, things they wanted to, and they withdrew the, repo the proposal in a few months. So, I know, you know you mentioned there's a select man that's like completely against it. Mm -hmm. Does that person have a suggestion or a plan? as to what to do with it? Open space? Right? I think, well, well I, she's been saying she, she doesn't think we've marketed it enough. We should market it more, but I don't know what we'd market it for, since we know as a golf course, it's not worth anything, and she doesn't want to develop. So I, I don't want to speak for anybody else. I can't, I right. really can't say. Ellen, thank you so much. Uh, we're kind of pressed for time. We have to vote on some of the uh, items that we have on the agenda. Okay. But thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you very much for you coming. Know, and thank you. Your thoughts. We look forward to having you come back. <laughs> thank in you. The, in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I actually do have to run. I have to pick up my daughter for okay. something. Wow. Could we just here? vote on it just a couple of times? Uh, very quick, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's look at. Um, <laughs> Yes. The proposal for the, the Woodbridge Community so Gardens. Uh, any changes to that document? I think we've looked at it again and again. We presented it to the board. So I think on the um, 8th of February, if um, some of you would like to come with us, you know, with me and do the presentation, I would appreciate it. And um, so there are no changes. Let's accept, make a motion. This is the bench marker? Yes. But no, this is the uh, community gardens. Community oh, gardens. gardens. Yeah. The community gardens. Does look good. To, to accept it as written. I make a motion to accept the proposal. I'll and second? So I'll second it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, the second item is the manage, uh, the, uh, the guidelines for the benches and structures. I think I'll tweak it with just a couple of little th things that we discussed. Yeah. Um, the you want to review? 10 years you and then make change. a motion? Um, make a motion to accept it with the small changes. With basically. the small changes, you want to state the changes? The change was to um, include a 10 year for the maintenance right. for all of the features the park bench, picnic table, bike rack, okay. trees and then to change the contract for the maintenance extension from 1525 down to $500. For 10 years also. For 10 years. And make it an estimated cost. Okay, correct. No yes, perfect. Okay, get all that in the minutes, yeah. right? Perfect. Second. Okay, the, the, so you're making the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, very good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, did we vote on the first one? All in favor on the first one? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Uh, the town of Woodbridge uh, wood removal permit. I think we should put the nesting considerations okay, okay. in there yeah. so that it's there and people mm -hmm. understand yeah. why didn't Definitely. we didn't do it for mm -hmm. the uh, entire year. Mm -hmm. So. Um, oh, promotion. after mud and safety right. issues. Right. Exactly. For and saying nesting. nesting. Okay. Habitat. Habitats to preserve the nesting and habitats of the wildlife. Um, I have a motion. 
I'll make a motion to accept the wood removal permit with some of the amendments just discussed. Okay. Uh, I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. It's unanimous. All right. And the um, last minutes. The, well, no. We oh, have okay. the uh, calendar. Benches. The calendar. Did we do the guidelines for benches? Yes. And other markers? Yes, we did that. We that and was the markers. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did that. Yep. The fall and and, and the uh, the calendar. Okay, the calendar, every, everybody's okay with the calendar and the mm -hmm. dates? Yep. Okay, so motion please. Motion to approve the calendar. Okay, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous decision. And finally? What, what was the date that you said you wanted some help on? December, uh, so February, sorry, 8th. February 8th. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to be there. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, yes. I'll let you know the time. Okay. All right. I think they start at 5, but I'll let you know. Okay. Um, okay, so now the approval of the minutes. We have a motion or I'll let you, well, you've seen it. You know, do you mm -hmm. need to approval of the minutes, please? A motion to that effect? Motion to approve the minutes okay. from the last meeting. Written. Second. Second. You, okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, unanimous. Okay. Very good. And um, meeting dates. So oh, that that was the meeting dates. Okay. The next meeting agenda items. So we're meeting. Our next meeting is 2017. 2017 in January. What is the date? Uh, Terry? 17. The 17th. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. The building's closed for MLK. Okay. Uh, the day after Martin Luther King. Correct. Right. On Tuesday. Um, so it's a Tuesday. Correct. Um, items for the agenda. I'm thinking perhaps we could have Betsy Quist to come and talk about property values and you know how things are going in town, real estate. For the senior center? No, for the properties. For what? Talk, you know, for about. What? Well, sounds like in relation to like a toll brothers. Yes, project in relation to you know how are the properties? What are the properties selling for? Uh, you know, maybe she could talk about bankruptcy, you know, and give Where us that. Where is Betsy from? She's from here. She's oh, okay. The, yeah. She's like the assessor. The, assess the assessor. I think it's fine to have someone coming, but I really think, I think we need to start really talking about a vision and moving the town, the fire department, the right. firehouse forward right. and like coming up with a, a right. game plan. Yeah, yep. no, you know, I agree. We, well, we went to the firehouse to look at it. Did we want to invite the chief over to speak about his needs too, as well, since the police were here? So uh, he didn't officially come over and talk okay. to us. We just yeah, did a walk. We, we could there. do that. We could do that. We could yeah. invite the chief to come over and talk to us. And then there was somebody else that I thought of. What um, about the Woodbridge? The recreation center? department. Oh, okay. to have the recreation the department mm. come and talk to us because we would be displacing them, you know, from the. That's a good idea. Building. Yep. So, any anybody else? Just so, that the daycare that's there. How yes. much space are they using? Do well, they need? Are they growing? Are they shrinking? I think they're shrinking? part. I think they they're part of the recreation. If I'm not mistaken. But I don't think so. No. I think okay. that's a, t a separate daycare. Okay. So I'll look into who's who would be in charge of that. Yeah, I just want to know like all the um, groups that are in yeah. that building. Yeah. yeah. No, really no, I'm going to propose. Here. I'm going to propose this. Yeah. Let's have one more meeting with people to come here to talk, give us their views. Okay. One more. Okay. You know, and then so we're in that building. And we're in that building. Who yeah. have an, an interest in there? Yeah. In, in the building. Right. And then the following meeting, I really should just be move. no right, yeah. move forward. Yeah. No, no in more. February. Right. Whether it's February or a special meeting, whatever yeah. it is, okay. but okay. then we can really just focus on. We can gather all the, the information that right. we have, mm -hmm. and then start discussing okay. how the next well, steps. The ad hoc committee. That's yes, the ad hoc anyway. committee would yeah. also. That was the other uh, right. group that I was thinking. Thank you for remembering that. Okay, so uh, I think we've got a lot done, and the meeting, um, it, it's 8.05, so uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes. Motion to adjourn, because okay. my daughter is probably walking home Thank by herself you. right sorry. now. She's yeah. yeah. cursing me out cursing right you. now. <laughs> second? A second, please? Uh, second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye.